Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We resume our fifth version of the task list. In this one, we are changing it so our model is based on a database. We basically have everything set up. Uh, we've done our, all our configuration and we've made a controller that has the elements that are supposed to give us database access. It is currently using view number four and we want to change that. We want to make a new view for number five. So we'll come down here and make a new, not, low, not version five main dot scala dot html. And if we open version four, we can copy this and paste it. It will be number five. Now I'm gonna leave the JavaScript as number four. So when we created number four, we were really taking version three and we left the back end the same and we made a new front end that used React. In this case, I wanna to try to keep using the same React front end, but now I'm going to make it so that all of these endpoints, instead of ending on number three, which uses the memory-based model, are gonna use version five. And so we're gonna use our uh, database model. And we should go ahead and create that. Okay, so we have our models here. We currently have this task list in memory model, how about we make a new task list database model? Nice informative name, so you can go find this when you're looking for it. And I wanna start off by copying, actually, let's see. How about we just copy our methods? And so this one's actually going to be a class. and paste in those methods. And that one will be, we have lots of stuff that's unhappy right now. Actually, if I replace all of them, we can get something that actually compiles. Okay, now we don't need the memory version. When I build this, I wanna pass it two things. I wanna pass it our database. Now there's a lot of different databases that we could import here. It turns out that I want the one that is associated with our Postgres profile. Okay, so once again, this import is telling Slick what database we are supposed to generate our SQL commands from. And so it's important to make this match up. I've had some students in the past uh, configure this where they used a different database here than what their actual database was. Remarkably, it doesn't work very well because the, the SQL that it generated wasn't quite right for the database that they were using. So we have you know, these, these calls that we want. Um, in order to, let's go ahead and let's make one of these a, I'm gonna make a val for our model which is a new task list database model. And I'm gonna pass in the DB. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to provide one other thing here, but it's going to be implicit, so I won't have to pass it in on the other side. And that is our execution context. From Scala Concurrent, okay. Um, and the reason for that is because everything that happens in the database is actually going to give us back futures. Okay. The, remember, the play framework is designed to be reactive. It's supposed to spread the work out and utilize your machine appropriately, not hogging a whole bunch of threads the way that something like uh, Tomcat would do, where it would create 2,000 threads and just give every task one thread. Instead, it creates a fixed set of tasks and as a request comes in it gets moved different different groups of threads do different parts of the processing and so it efficiently uses your computer and generally gives you good throughput even when you get hammered um, now for the task uh, for the controller itself this controller is probably going to look a lot more like number three so let's see we already have our load here how about I actually go down and copy everything else? And we can 
close number three. Um, and we'll probably have to make some interesting changes here. Now, all of these are currently happy. So we have our with JSON body. This was just a shortening agent because all of these actions were getting JSON in as the request. And this allows us to pass in a function that does something nice. Uh, so for example, validate. They are giving us a username and a password. And so this had been saying task list in memory model. I want to switch that over. In fact, every place that says task list in memory model, and we can use the handy control D keystroke, is just going to be changed over to model. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I apparently got rid of an open parentheses there. Okay. So we have our model, the call to validate user. And this all still compiles, which is kind of cool, but that's also because it compiles, but these don't do anything. There is another change that's going to have to be made here. Uh, I mentioned that all of these things are going to be happening in futures. Let's go ahead and let's write one query uh, to, to check to see if this is going to work. And this will also allow us to see how queries are written. So we have our database and we can run queries on it by calling dot run. And this takes this uh, a DBIO action. It, the, the types here might look a little intimidating, but they're really not that bad. Remember this tables file here, which was generated for us, has different elements in it for each one of the tables that we created. So it has users and items. Validating a user is coming from users and actually this file we will definitely want to import tables dot underscore because we're going to use that and we write our queries in slick very much the same way we would with scala collections so i need to find if there is a user whose uh, whose username and password match so i'm going to type this in to start with now remember we are going to store our uh, Passwords encrypted. We're going to ignore that for just a second. We'll we'll come back to that. Um, and so, turns out that every element of users is a user row. So I want to see if the user row dot, and it has three fields in it. it has the ID, which was that integer value that is the key for it, a password, and a username. And I want to check to see if that's equal to username. And the thing we'll have to change in a future video, we won't do it for this one, but we'll just assume that our, if our database passwords were saved as non-encrypted, uh, we would do the same type of check for password. Okay. And at the end of this, I would say dot result. Now, what does that give me back here? So, A, there's two things I should talk about. One, you'll notice there are three question marks here. And that is because the two question marks has a specific meaning in, in Scala that it gives you back. It does a comparison. It gives you back a Boolean. It's defined on type any. So, it just exists on everything, at least in Scala 2. They need their comparison to do something fundamentally different. You'll see the type there says rep Boolean. Okay, there is a representation of Boolean. And so all the things inside of our queries are using this rep type instead. So val matches equals. I type that in so you can see the return type of this. So our DB result, our DB run, we did a filter on this and then we asked for the result. And that gives us back everything from here. There are other things that you could. Uh, call on this. Um, I like result. I actually haven't played with first recently. Um, but notice that it gives you back a future of a sequence of table of t the user rows. Okay, And what we really want to do is we need to return a Boolean, but we're not going to return a straight Boolean. This is actually going to be a future of Boolean. I didn't need to retype that. 
because it represents a computation that will happen in the future. And this is a Scala concurrent future. And so our return here, I want to take matches and I want to map it. Turns out we map futures just like we map lists and we map options to get back new values. We map a future, it does a computation on the result and gives you back a new future. Of course, it doesn't do the computation right when you call it. It does the computation uh, whenever the previous one was done. So this allows us to easily call validate user, but it is scheduling the work to happen in, in a nice uh, parallel off in its own threads, and we don't have to worry about a lot of the details. So what do I want to map this by? Well, this is, once again, it's giving me the user rows. It was a sequence of user row. And this worked if user rows is not empty. And now this code is happy. Our validate user actually returns a future of Boolean. This code is not. And the reason is that, once again, this is now giving me back a future. And if I want to make that happy, just as before, I want to map my future And let's add a close down here and tab this in. If user exists. Okay, that was to give us kind of a minimal change. So going for the minimal change there. Oh, and there is one other thing. Instead of just calling a regular action, we're going to call an action dot async. Uh, ba -bum -bum. Required a result. Oh, is this because my... Yes. All of our things are going to require futures, which is technically going to break a lot of stuff down below. Uh, but the validate will work. Everything else is now going to be unhappy. Um, so we pass in. We'll have to, we're clearly not going to finish this in, in this video. Uh, we have to change everything over so that it winds up working with these uh, with the futures. We'll wind up mapping them. We'll come back in the next video and we'll continue fixing up validate. Then we'll have to go through and not only work on writing the database, but updating this as well so that it uses futures so that it will allow us to pull all of our data out of the database.